brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Years ago, my mother-in-law was, was living with me and my wife. Um, we bought the family house that she was living in. At that time, she only owned 50% of the house. Okay. Um, the other half was owned by the sister-in-law at that time. The, her husband died. So I, me and my wife bought the, the house. 50% went to the sister-in-law, my, you know, my father-in-law and sister. Okay. And we, her mom was like, Hey, can I live with you guys? If that's okay. And I said, sure. Fine. After a couple of years later, um, I, she and me went for a car ride and I asked her, you know, I was just curious. I said, like, mom, how much do you have like retirement and stuff like that? And she's like, no, I really don't. And she's like, I only have maybe like $80,000. And I was like, wait a second. And I was like, you're 72 years old. You only have $80,000 with something mainstreamly like happen. And she said, well, I figured you guys would help me out. Mm. And I was like, what? And she's like, well, I figured all if all the money goes gone. I figured you and my daughter would help me out. And after that conversation, I, I, I asked, you know, talked to my wife about it and she, and my wife was appalled to it. And then mom, her mom moved out and was living on her own now because it was putting strain on to my marriage. Why was she living with you in the first place? Because my wife felt kind of, well, when we bought the house, 50% of that house. So the house was worth. Do you own the whole thing now? Yes, I do. Sir. Okay. I okay. couldn't, I, I couldn't understand. I didn't the story. Either. Okay. Okay. So that part, so that now part. mom has moved on and what's your question? How do I bring up? Like she's already like, that's what I'm saying. Like if she has only $80,000 to like live off of, and that was like three years ago. So like, she's 75 now. Work? She's yeah. She's up there. She's 75. Does she, does she have uh, social security coming in? She lives on that. Yes. Okay. So she's probably not using the AD except when there's an emergency. Right? I mean, yeah, pretty much. We don't know. I mean, we don't know. We're guessing. She, we don't she's know. not working. I don't know because I, yeah, she's not working. I didn't bring yeah. it up again because my wife's like, that's not your business. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like, if mom's living under my house, I want to know. She's not how now. Much yeah, she's not yeah. now. Well, she's not now. Okay. But at the same time, if something did go wrong, let's say she's out of money, let's say. So you Something feel like she's happen. not ju- you feel like she's not just using social security to survive she's pulling actively off of that nest egg and you're worried that yeah. that's going to run out. That's going to run out and then I'll be the escape girl. Me and my wife will be the escape. Girl. Mm-hmm. And my she my wife does have another sister. Mm-hmm. What's your household income? I make over 95,000. What does your wife make? My wife makes over maybe let's say 30. Okay, so you got a hundred and twenty thousand dollars household income in Chicago, yeah. Illinois, and you're we just don't know about mom. Um, so here's the thing: um, you can decide to do one of two things. You can just lay this down and not worry about it, which is probably what you need to do. Okay, you're not obligated morally or ethically to step in and make her life perfect if she has not managed her life well regardless of what her expectations are. And your wife has been trained by this woman that she's supposed to take care of her mother. And her mother has told everybody, you all are all going to take care of me. And there may be a little bit of a surprise when you stand up and say, no, we're not. So that's one possibility. And you and your wife need to get on the same page and say, okay, when mom comes begging, we're, we're not going to be her backstop. Okay. That, that's, that's what, that's one option. And you got to decide if you're, if you're going to do that, you've got to decide that as a unified front, the two of you, the two of you. Okay. The other option is to go and completely invade her life. Because if you're expected to take care of her, if she fails, then you have the right to keep her from failing. I agree. 
if she, I mean, if you, if your wife and her mother are expecting you to take care of this woman, then you should go over there and sit down and open up all of her books and put that one lady on a freaking budget mm -hmm. and be I in mean, control sir. and be looking over her shoulder. Otherwise, I'm not your backstop. Yeah, I'm not going to be responsible for you unless I get full say. Yeah, because is she healthy? I mean, she's a. I mean, she's healthy. My point is, I mean, if the time she could comes, make it, she could make it a decade. I mean, she could. Yeah. Right, but if the time comes where she needs home health care, or she needs, do you know what I'm saying? That is you on the hook for that. No, so for it's that not. reason, not him. But if you go option two, yeah, if and option that, two, you got to go over be, there. You got to go over there and put her on a budget where she lives on Social Security and she takes her hands off the eighty, and you yeah. put it in an account where she can't touch it without your help. You have to take over I mean, her. I, if you're responsible for her finances, you should take over her finances. Otherwise, I'm not going to be responsible for her. I'm I mean, not going to allow you to drive right. your car in the ditch and then bitch because you don't have a car. That's not an option. I'm with it. Yeah. <laughs> so the problem is, is that your mother-in-law and your wife are both passive aggressive and you're getting ready to get aggressive aggressive. And this is going to stink up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, there's not, you guys have been trying to walk down the middle of it. It's none of your business, but we have to take care of her. No, it is by God, my business. If I have to take care of her, that makes it my business. That's how that works. Yeah. So, but I'm not going to, you know, I, I, you can't have it both ways. You can't go, well, you have to take care of her, but she's allowed to do whatever she wants. No, it's not okay. Because that, that, that's his fear. And it's a valid fear. The hard part about that. And it, what you're saying is, is exactly right. The hard part about it though, is if number if the two option doesn't help and the in the the parent in law says i'm not giving you access i'm a grown person you know da da da, da right then i'm not giving you then, help then you have to take your hands off of it but then the time will inevitably come as the child where you will see that they need my help and you but you've already chosen to do this so either way the sucky part of this and the teaching part of this is do not put your children in this situation. Amen. Because at the end of the day, they're screwed. No, you're, you're danged if you do, danged if you don't. Either way, because it is hard to sit back and watch somebody struggle, even though you tried to help. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's no, and then it sucks when you have to financially help somebody who should have helped themselves. So there's no good side of it. Just do right and handle your money the way we're teaching. And don't wait until. Don't do this to your kids. Yeah. For real. That's, uh, that's the point. I that's like that point. point. Create your free every dollar budget today, the simplest way to budget for your life.